What's up you guys and welcome to Wine Jets. Just enjoy the stuff. My name is Max and I really like to drink wine in moderation, uh, Mom. So tonight I am drinking Tranche Cellars 2006 Cabernet Sauvignon. We get a good shot at that there. Um, this is the 06, uh, so it should be interesting. I have to give a little swirl in my glass to air it out a little bit. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about the story of Tranche Cellars. Um, Tranche is a small to medium sized winery in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, they have like sheep out in the vineyards, so it's beautiful. Um, I think I've talked a little bit about this on Snapchat, so it might be repetitive, so I'm sorry. But um, sheep out in the vineyards, it's just outside of downtown Walla Walla. It's set right in the foothills of the Blue Mountains, and so the vineyard that the winery sits in is called the Blue Mountain Vineyard. Um, they produce about 2,500 cases of wine, and Tranche actually just translates to slice in French. So they have different sort of um, sections to their uh, to the wines that they make. They have the Mediterranean slice, which is stuff like Sangiovese, Italian grape. They have Dolcetto, another Italian grape, Barbera as well. Um, and they also have an estate slice, which is um, basically Syrah, um, Syrah, Cabernet, Chardonnay, things that you find uh, normally that are, I guess, more popular here in America for the most part. Uh, and they have their their um, slice of pop series, so it's slice of pop blanc. Uh, slice of pop, excuse me, is a red is a red wine. It's a southern Rhone blend, so it's a French red blend. They have a white French Rhone blend. It's called a slice of pop blanc. And they have a pink pop, which is a rosé, which is super popular. Uh, it sells out pretty quickly once it uh, hits the market in the springtime. So tonight, I want to go through a few things, teach you how to um, use a wine key or a corker or a corkscrew, whatever the hell you want to call it. And uh, yeah, and go through kind of the steps of how I like to analyze wine and what I like to do. And uh, hopefully I can teach you a few things about, um, about drinking wine. So it's not that tough. So. Yeah, first things first, let's go to step one. I'm gonna hop behind the camera here so I can kind of show you what's going on. So if you can see this here, oh yeah, baby, there we go. So we got a foil here. Uh, foil cap, foil topper, a little bit of foil. Aluminum foil, so here we go. Pull out the knife. It's usually easiest for me to just get right around this second lip here. Some people like to go up top, but I like to go in on the second, uh, the second little ledge or lip there. Just go around it one time. That way, flip the key, and come back around this way. And then once you're successful with that, you can just sort of take the edge of the knife and just sort of twist around and peel that off, boom, done, throw it on the ground, and now you're ready to pull out the corkscrew, baby. Things are getting wild. Here we go, just try and center that somewhere in the middle or else you're gonna have your cork, or your uh, screw shooting out the side of the cork and it's gonna look pretty shitty, sorry sis. Um, give it a nice one. There we go, let's twist. Get it to about there, you don't have to go all the way in, but that's usually good for me. And this is sort of a double lever, double hinge, whatever you want to call it, step here. So I go about halfway down with the lever. And up. Oh, <laughs> oh classic. A classic failure. I'm not going to edit this either. <laughs> How to open a bottle of wine. Shucks. Is it filming? Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, I got it. Okay. I just let you know that nobody is perfect, and uh, even I goofed. So now it's perfect. A little experiment, because when you break a wine cork, you will now know how to fix it. Boom. Well, how to salvage a bottle of wine? We just turned this episode into something new. What do you know? Uh oh. I have to go nice and gentle with this guy here. Nice gentle twist. Go for round two here. Oof. 
voila. And after, <laughs> I'm doing a video on how to open a cork and I break the cork. Classic, classic. So there you have it. How to break a cork in six easy steps. Now, let's get to it. Nobody's perfect. Gonna get the cork out. Daddy will show you how to get the cork out. Let's see what's going on here. This one had a little bit of sediment around the inside of the, the neck of the bottle because it's just an older wine and some of the, some of the particles in the wine will fall out with time. Um, when it's aged on its side, they'll just build up or upside down depending if it's in the box or not. That sediment will build up and um, that's where you get that sort of, um, looks like dirt inside your wine bottle. Sometimes crystals if it's a white wine. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna air this out a little bit. Check out the color. I like to check out the color in wine because uh, it just sort of tells you a little bit about the wine. This one is sort of fading at the edge a little bit. And I hope you can see that okay. Maybe not, if not. Sorry. This one's fading at the edge a little bit. That means that it's, it's a wine that's got a little bit of age on it. This one has eight years of age. Uh, it's 2006, so it starts to do that. It's a deeper, darker wine. That's how you know um, Sometimes you can tell or get an idea of what the grape might be by the color or the uh, opacity of the wine or opaqueness, I guess. Um, if it's a lighter wine like a Pinot or a Dolcetto or um, Grenache, sometimes it'll be a little bit lighter in color. If it's a Syrah or a Merlot or a Cabernet, something like that, it'll be a little bit deeper, darker color. So and that's just because the thickness of the skin uh, has, the skin has the color in it, and so that's what, when you press that out, that's what gives the wine its color when it's fermented. And so uh, the thicker the skin, the deeper the color generally, the thinner the skin, the lighter the color. So now let's get into the nose here. And I like to get my nose right in there. I don't like to, I don't like to goof around. I just put your nose in the glass. Don't do this stuff. Don't be a pussy. Just get right in with it. Oh, yeah. And this wine right off the bat's got a lot of coffee, a lot of sort of cherry dark cherry notes, dark cherry smells, lots of mocha. It's like we just walked into a Starbucks. A um, little bit of like spiciness, a little bit of cedar, a little bit of that coming through. Uh, let's see what's uh, going on with the palate here. Before I tell you about the palate, I got into American Pickers about five months back and I was really into watching that show and Frank and Mike had me picking so I was going to garage sales in Walla Walla and I found this reusable container, do not destroy, this is an old army uh, food storage container I believe so I thought it would be for a perfect spit bucket, it's probably worth 40 bucks but got it for five at a garage sale, kind of a picker baby. So that's the story of that. Let me taste this guy one more time. This one might need a little bit of decanting. You know, pour it into a glass face, let the air sort of mix with the wine and the flavors and sort of let it breathe a little bit and pull out some more flavors. It might need a little bit of that. It seems it'll be a little bit tight right now. Um, but I'll give it another shot, see what's going on. This wine is not super killing it on the palate right now. The nose is giving up a lot. But the palate is really kind of, kind of straight away, not a whole lot of flavors and a whole lot of complexity. It's really kind of boring. Um, a little bit of like burnt, burnt cherries and a little bit of like spicy, spicy wood. Hey, Lorne. Hey. Do you feel the wine, Jesse? You want to come on? Oh, are you filming? Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Come on, say hi. Hey, everybody. Uh, wine Jets, just enjoy the stuff. How's your day? It was good. Good. Just got back from the meeting, um, yeah. the Alliance meeting, and it worked out. It was really good. Nice. Yeah. I cool. love what you did to the place. Thank you. How'd you get a free gift? Oh, <laughs> are you filming? Yeah, go for it. So, Something that I found today when I went to a industry meeting 
was the Tribella. This is a free pour that was invented here in Walla Walla. Um, and basically what it helps to do is it aerates the wine as it comes out. And it's actually very sexy when it comes out. So aerates. it aerates. Actually, it aerates. Max is going to give a presentation right now. Can I use it? Yeah. Pour it in. Put it in. Invented Walla Walla? Yeah. Uh-oh. Wine toys. Wine toys, everybody. Rest of the shot of what are it? So, hold on. Notice that open space right there. That helps the wine aerate. 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 So, <laughs> Come on, man. Going in and pouring. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> quick aeration. This wine was a little bit tight, anyways. So maybe we need a little quick aeration to see what happens here. Perfect. Ah, uh, still pretty much smells the same. Let's see what's going on the palate, though. One more time. Blackberry, 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 spicy wood, that sort of thing. Um, it's still not super impressive, but I think if I came back to this wine in a half hour after letting it be open and let the oxygen sort of mix up the flavors, um, it might give a little bit more um, aroma, a little bit more character on the palate, on my tongue. Um, so yeah, this is Tranchelles 2006. This is an old sort of library wine, as they call it. And, uh, but other than that, Tranche makes a great lineup of wines, and I encourage you to go out if you're ever in Walla Walla or uh, maybe in Seattle area, you can go online and buy their wines, seek out their wines. They've got some fun stuff. I recommend the Dolcetto or the Barbera, both with pizza. Dolcetto and Barbera, great pizza wines. Dolcetto's a little bit cheaper too, so I think. So that's a good go. Uh, this is Wine Jets. Just enjoy the stuff. I will hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.